Hi guys, welcome back. It's Lauren here of Flossabilities, um, back with my May update of what happened. Um, it's the 1st of June today. It's an absolutely glorious day. Uh, May has been rainy every single day pretty much, but just at the end, the bank holiday weekend into the first summer month, technically, it has gone glorious. Um, so yeah, ignore my moaning later in the video in different sections where I'm talking about the rain. <laughs> But yeah, it's a beautiful day and I'm back, as I said, with my uh, May update. May has been such a long month. Um, it was my birthday May, that's one of the things that happened and I feel like it was decades ago now. Um, it's just been such a long month. Um, don't know why, she just felt it to me. Um, it's been a very good stitchy month. Um, I had a bit of time off because of my birthday and the bank holiday weekend and things like that. Um... So yeah, just summary of May, turned a year older, not so good, had a great day though, so that was nice. Um, oh, hairdressers reopened, so I finally got in, um, it's not looking its best actually today, but it is it is done, um, and I feel a lot better. Um, I have, <laughs> I really, you probably don't, is really thick hair that kind of goes like this as well as like this and I can live with it I'm used to it I'm you know used to kind of Hermione Granger year one level thickness but the length of time that the hairdressers have been short I was just slowly turning into Hagrid's level of thickness hair I said to my mum if, if I was a dog it would have been cruel to leave me this long with this much hair <laughs> so I was overdue um she's done a really good job I really like it and it's kind of light for the summer um but I am actually missing my brunette locks I used to be a brunette I used to box dye it myself not very well not very successfully um and it would be really nice to see it brunette but done by a professional so don't be surprised if in the um in the autumn I just pop on one of my videos and I'm a brunette um but yeah for the summer this is nice and um I'm, I'm happy with it and I'm just happy to have a bit of weight off my shoulders <laughs> like literally so yeah that happened um what else happened oh sorry phone showing at me already well they just began um I want to give away um Laura from Loves um Rubber Stamps and Needle Crafts. Maybe Loves Needle Crafts and Rubber Stamps might be the way around. Um I wanna a giveaway. It's coming from the States, so it hasn't arrived yet. Um but yeah, that that I won a magazine from her channel. Um so thank you very much, Laura. So I'll show you that when it comes in. And that's it really. Overall, it's just been a very good stitchy month i can confirm i did 16,533 stitches and as i aim to do 5,000 on each of my pieces which would equal 15,000 there has been some you know extra stitches put in which is good um so we'll go straight into whips if you want to see my um st stitchy gifts they're over in the segment after this i put it at the end um so they're just gifts i got for for my birthday uh, that are stitchy related things I bought for myself using um, vouchers or my partner put some money towards it um, it's not just haul really it is a little bit of a snippet of what I will be doing in the future after these um, because of what I've bought it is it's me kitting things up so there is little sneak peeks without me giving away the full new rotation of what you might expect to see in the upcoming months um but there's a lot in the background that i'll be showing you nearer the time um about my rotation of the future um but if you want a sneak peek and also see some lovely haul that's in the next segment but for now let's just get on with the whips so the first whip i'm actually going to show you is just one today from mama floss abilities she's had a page finish on her chris done um all the charts you're about to see are pain-free craft charts all the artists um, the artist is all Chris Dunn um, and Mama Floss Abilities is using the same fabric, 25 count easy guide, but she's stitching it one over one um, and she's had a page finish and here it is. So hers is called Knitting Circle and it's this page that she's done and there's some lovely pop of colour in there now where you can see the, the sheep shawls and what they're stitching. 
is absolutely gorgeous. Um, in fact, the, the winner of the giveaway, Sue, congratulations again, Sue, she came forward and has now received her prize and she chose a PDF of a knitting circle. So um, I think she saw Mama Floss abilities and how beautiful it looked. Um, it piqued her interest, shall we say. So she got this one as well. So enjoy that, Sue, and well done for winning. Um, but it's absolutely stunning and she's not far off a row finish. absolutely gorgeous well done mama floss abilities so i'll show you more progress as and when we make it um okay my three whips they're moving along now guys it's getting serious it's getting serious now um first one i'll show you just in the order of the rotation i did it in is halloween um this is what it'll look like when it's finished And this is what it looked like last time you saw it. Um, all mine are 25 count easy grid, but they're just stitched two over one full cross. That's the only difference between mine and Mama Floss abilities is that she does one strand and I do two. That's it. Okay. So here he is today. I've just gone back a bit, show the whole effect. Oh, I absolutely love it. So we started row four. Um, this was a partial page. So I just merged it with this and treated it like one big page. Um, so because I did that, it, it did feel like it took forever <laughs> to get out of this page. Um, but I did it and I reached the top of a pumpkin. Yay! So excited about that. This pumpkin was really confetti, but he's absolutely gorgeous. Um, there's a bit of banister there, so it looks like he's on a bit of a funny angle at the moment, but it'll make sense once I go down. Um, so, worked on tile floor, if you can just see it's a bit tiled effect. Bottom of a, like an underskirt, a dress, a coat, finished off the bag, um, really confetti the bag, and then got this kind of um, round step um, into a home, like part of, to make the oval of the, the tree door. Um, yeah, so great page. It was really strange because I feel like, because it's a new row, I haven't done much, but I, I did do um, 5,443 stitches this month, I know. So I've beat my goal, you know, I don't know why. I think it's just because, like, obviously compared to a, top, a full row, it just doesn't feel that far along. But of course it's, you know, it's brand new row. Um, and I even got in second page. And because I work with the darks first, it meant cauldron time. Um, and so I... It looks like a black cauldron, but it, you know, a stitch as we know, it's blacks, dark blues, browns. So I just went through with all the dark colours, and if they trail down into the page, I did that as well. Um, so yeah, just going to fill that off next time. I don't think this will be as bad a page as this one, um, because pre predominantly the page is made up of cauldron. This is a, a welcome mat here into her home, and it'll be like a little sliver of this brown here. So. That's what I'll be working on um, from tonight um, as it's the new rotation. But yeah, um, little stat, I'll just hold it open while I do that. It was at 52.82% last time I saw it, saw you. Uh, 5,443 stitches later, we're at 57.17%. Love it. Looking really, really nice. So that's Halloween. Uh, next one is Wise Old Owl. So this is what it looked like, um, what it'll look like when it's finished. This is what it looked like last time you saw it. And if memory serves right, you'll see that I had just a few stitches to fill in on the wing page. Um, and then my my goal was to get a row finish and I'm pleased to advise that I did that we have a row finish guys on wise old owl and that meant we have um, a big candle oh I love it I love this candle just come over a bit um so it's like one of them white pillar candles and because it's lit, it, it's got that lovely glow that it creates. Um, it was really nice to finish the bottom of these books um, 
because I snake, I had to go all the way across, come back down and come back over just to get to the bottom. So it was really nice to see a completion on the books. And this is obviously a very dark, if you can see in the light, a dark shelf. There's the lip of it and it kind of, there's the rest of the shelf underneath. I did start making my way down the page a bit on the last rotation. Not very much, but it's a start. Um, and I finished the owl's um, feather and I think it was a bit of hair missing. Um, so I did... 6,087 stitches on him so he had the most done um, but absolutely loving him I'm really glad the candle's in because it gives it a light source now so it explains where makes more sense where there's shadows and where there's light etc um, and it was just nice it's something a bit different on the piece um, he was at 52.16% done and now he's at 56.50 so again not far off 60% um yeah i just love all the details i love him he's he's not really far off from being done because when i come down now it's mainly this page is mainly more of this dark shelf so i don't know how enjoyable that'll be but we'll see and then it's the tip of his wing and you kind of go over here and a bit more body and then you hit the book that's covering his body so he's not that far off really um in terms of the actual owl but yeah, there's my page finish. And then one final uh, look at him. But it was, it, was, it was two pages, really. Um, but he's had the most done in the 6,000 stitches. So yeah, we're just going to start row four this time. And that's it. Wonderful. Okay, last one. Um, cheese delivery. Um, this is what it'll look like when it's finished. And this is what it looked like last time you saw it okay so cheese delivery got the least done um for a few reasons one i'm back over near the window which is like confetti central i always seem to struggle in that bit and it's very light so when i'm stitching it it's very difficult under my overhead light at night to kind of see what i'm doing a bit even though it's a good light it's just so muted and very similar colors it's difficult to you kind of step back from it um so that was one reason i was just generally slower then he landed on a rotation where i worked one saturday and then the following saturday i was at my um brother's and we went to the cinema and we could finally meet again out of lockdown so i don't regret it at all um being a bit less stitches because it was really nice to see my brother um but it has meant he's he's only just met his his target this month so but that's fine yeah i did um like 800 stitches last night before midnight to get him to 5,003 stitches done so i just hit me target but here we go here it is sorry i'll just go back to give you the full effect first I'm not making you seasick. So I think the most obvious difference on this piece <laughs> is that this guy's appeared and I absolutely love him. He's got a peg on his nose, which still has some stitches to go in, but you can just make out uh, there's a peg. And he's brought in the cheeses from this van and um, this mouse is signing the ledger. Um, and you see his wee pen there. Um, it took me ages to get out of this page on the rotation it's just this back color there's lots of different confetti stitches and the writing is all different colors and i mean just to have like writing behind a peg it, it's, it's going to be confetti but the effect is amazing and it's so worth it um so he was at 58.91 percent done and he's now at 62.97 so we have hit in the 60s for cheese delivery so yeah there's so much writing um we've got backwards writing for the outside cheesemongers purveyor of fine cheeses i think this says f hartley behind him this is just a pattern on the van this, this says something like merchant so i think it's gonna say like cheese merchant so all this is like writing backwards writing on the wall so it's very difficult um but it's lovely and i think he's gorgeous i think he really pops so it might be a bit ambitious but my goal for him is to finish this page and try and get a row finish. We'll see. If I get a row finish, three rows on this one is, is big because it's longer. And what it means is, is that I've only then got on the rotation after the row finish, 
a full page. I think it's like three square partial page down. And it's a bit anticlimactic to me to do the whole row of the big page and then go under to do a three square row, um, like 300 stitches down. It probably is like the bottom of things, bottom of boxes. So I'm just going to combine them pages when I get to this row. And basically I'm going to see like the proper L of the end and just go along. So it might take me longer to go along because I'm merging the page. But I think overall that's the best thing for me to do because I think I'll... I'll speed up and I'll be like, oh God, I've got to finish and I just need to go along and then I'll be done. So yeah, the goal is to get um, a row finish on him next time if I can. I'll try my best. We'll see how confetti he is. Um, but he's absolutely gorgeous and there's so much going on. I hope you can see things because I can't. Um, and we've got four characters now in this because we've got that top mice, this... One under the glass here is a bit faded. Um, this guy here, and then we've got the weasel. Absolutely love it. So that's all my whips, guys. Excellent stitchy month. Let's hope we can do that again in June and get really moving along. Um, the the next section, as I said, um, is, is haul and, and stitchy gifts, but it is a bit of, of a sneak peek. So I hope you... Um, would like to watch that and let me share that with you and um, but if not if that's not your thing completely fine I'll say goodbye now and um, I hope you have a wonderful stitchy month and the first month of, of summer um, if you have some lovely warm weather um, and for those who are staying with me I'll see you over in the um, next video so bye to those now who are not staying with me and thank you very much for uh, commenting liking and subscribing and um, let's jump over now to stitchy gifts See you in a minute, guys. Bye. Hi, guys. Just popped on to show you my um, birthday um, stash acquisitions um, and some items I bought myself with some vouchers from two Christmases ago. <laughs> uh, due to COVID, um, it wasn't worth using them before then. Um, so. This will be um, inputted at the end of the video because I know not everyone likes this section. Um, but for those who do, thank you very much for sticking around and, and I hope you enjoy seeing all the stitchy goodness um, that I received. Um, there is one item on its way. I won a giveaway with um, Laura from Love's Rubber Stamps and Needle Crafts. Um, lovely, lovely Laura. Um, and I've won a, a magazine which has got some beautiful kind of oldie worldy um, Santa faces in, um, among other things. But that was the main thing I went in for with it. Um, and I won. So she's sending that across. Um, now, you may have, if it arrives in time, you may have already seen it in that video. So I haven't got it now. But thank you so much, Laura. Um, she is a great floss tuber. She's like me. She works a lot. <laughs> so she gets out a video as much as she can. But if you haven't seen her yet, she's lovely. Um, please go check her out. Um, so yeah, hopefully you've seen the magazine in the first segment. And if not, I'll show it in the, the next video. Um, but yeah, that means I haven't got it in, in time to show for this video. I'll do it next one. Anyway, so okay, so birthday haul. So, um, before I show you kind of stitchy items, um, I wanted to show you this from my partner because I just thought it was so funny and because it is so me, um, because it's Chris Dunn. So Chris Dunn does a lot of different, a bit like Anne, she's, he's got um, Anne Stokes, he's, he, he kind of puts his art on different things and you can buy um, cards with his art. So my partner got me Toad the Traffic Queller. <laughs> Um, which is a Chris Dunn illustration from Wind in the Willows. How beautiful is that? Um, it's a bit of a running joke because I hate driving. I drive, but I absolutely hate it and I'm useless at it. Um, I'm just riddled with anxiety. I always feel like I'm in someone's way um, when I'm doing it. So this was a bit of an inside joke because it says Toad the Traffic Queller. Um, and that's supposed to be me tootling about in our car, just like a maniac. Um, so yeah, so I just thought I'd show you it because it's Chris Dawn and that's what all my patterns are. But I just thought that was brilliant and that you can get um, cards and different things with um, with Chris Dawn's artwork on. So yeah, so that was that was something that was funny. Um, the next thing I'll show you, I'll actually show you as like a picture on the screen. 
This is a new re newly released um, chart by Pain Free Crafts of um, a Chris Dunn kind of winter Christmas scene. And it's actually from the nursery rhyme, uh, Little Jack Horner. Um, so as my partner puts this up here for you to see, it's absolutely stunning. And it's, and it's got church and it's snow and I can't wait to stitch this one. I just want to add to the bile. Um, the nursery rhyme for this is little Jack Horner sat in the corner eating a Christmas pie. He put in he put in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, "What a good boy am I!" <laughs> so that's the inspiration behind this um, this piece that you can see here. Um, I just love it. Anything with the animals together um, and a winter scene, I just it's right up my street. So they're releasing new ones all the time of Kristen's artwork. Um, you know, every few weeks, months, she'll put a new one out and there are some I just I have to have. And I said, oh, it's come out just before my birthday. <laughs> Let's get that one. <laughs> um, and he very kindly did. So um, yeah, that's been already converted um, and put on my pattern keeper with all my others ready to do. Um, I will have to carry on just doing a Chris done every rotation if I want to get them all done. So um, that's that. Okay, what else did we get? Um, another gear from my partner. Um, now I'd seen this, it's kind of ridiculous really, because I, I used to live in Scotland and uh, the very famous chapel, Rosalind Chapel is in Scotland. Um, and um, it was the one that featured on the Da Vinci Code, <laughs> if you've not seen that. Um, but Magnolia Nana um, introduced me to these on her philosophy channel. So it took a lady from overseas to show me something that I could have known and seen in the country I used to live in. How crazy is that? But anyway, um, Rosalind Chapel have their own cross stitch of Rosalind Chapel. It's just a very kind of simple, oldie worldie. Um, being honest, it's not my usual taste, but I love it. And when I saw it, Rosalind Chapel, has a, without going into too much detail, has a very big sentimental meaning in our family, um, in my partner's family. And I wanted to do it for him. And I showed him the chart and he said, you've got to get that. You've got to do that for me. So he bought that for me for one of my birthday gifts so I could stitch it for him. And it will feature um, in my rotation um, when I finish these. Um, so this is how it comes in this lovely um, bag. Um, just a little draw bag, drawstring bag. And that's the pattern there. You can see at the front. Um, but it is a full kit. And get this like little card in there with it. Um, here's the full kit. So you've got all your threads, pattern, this kind of linen. Actually looks like Ada, sorry. Ada. Um, just a very kind of oatmeal-y neutral Ada. I think this should be, for me, quite hopefully a quick stitch. Um, but yeah, just... A beautiful, beautiful little kit. And like I said, not my usual style, but I do absolutely love it. And because we're going to have a lot of browns and woods in our home, I do, I can visualise where this is going to go. Um, and the fact that it's sentimental for my partner, um, I really just want to, to do this for him. So yeah, so he bought me this, which is just lovely. Uh, really puts some meaning um, into a, a cross stitch. So yeah. Very, very nice. Um, what else? Oh, so the other thing my partner bought me um, was he went on a bit of a, a needle minder craze for me with pain free crafts. So um, more crystal needle minders came out. Um, I got these two. Sorry about the glare. It's such a grey day. Um, this is Halloween. So there was finally a needle minder created for that. So I've been putting that on my Halloween one. This is one I've got um, as well to do. Um, I think it's called Settling In. And I've got that. So that's going to go on that one when I'm going to start that. Um, and then again, um, two more to go with patterns. I actually um, already... What's going on with the light? There you are. Two more that I already have as patterns um that i haven't started yet and i've got the needle minders ready to go so that was lovely of him um okay so what else did we get um 
I did, I mentioned I did an order on 123 Stitch with vouchers I'd had from two Christmas ago and my partner put the remaining amount towards what I wanted to get my wish list. So one of the things I got was I have been, like for the last two years, been trying to kit up a four set of Mill Hill kits that come in a four and it's the... Um, Towards the Night Before Christmas poem, you know, obviously if you haven't seen my last videos, but I've done the actual poem, um, and it should be quite obvious which video it is, because I think it's the thumbnail, um, but I saw these from Mill Hill, and it's the images of a Towards the Night Before Christmas, but kind of telling the story in four images, and I got the first three, could not find the fourth, in the UK, you just couldn't get it anymore, and I kept panicking it was going to go out of stock on 123 Stitch, or it would, they would stop selling it, but luckily, in this order, I managed to get it, so I got the final one in this set, which is um, a Jolly Old Elf, um, which is obviously part of the poem, A Jolly Old Elf, I think they've got the stockings were hung, um, while children were nestled in their beds, just key points of that poem, there's four of them, and they're done on these, now you get everything in the Mill Hill kit, and um, it's actually fabric square that it comes with, I thought it was hard, I don't know why, I thought it was just like the classic Mill Hill kits, where you got it with a hard piece of fabric, but um, I got actual kind of fabric fabric with it, but I'd already decided what I was doing with it, um, a while ago so crash <laughs> sorry sorry for that loud noise I do apologize so i got a job lot of 32 count raw opalescent belfast linen in this haul it's huge this is what i did one um it was the night before christmas the um the Christmas piece I just mentioned um, on and I fell in love with this fabric and so did my partner in fairness and he said I want you to do majority of your Christmas projects on that fabric it just goes so well so what I'm going to do is I am going to put these on this instead in the order of the story on one big fabric and almost have it like that size so yeah that's what I bought this guy for and then I bought this job lot of fabric I, it's huge this let's see if I can open it out it's just I bought a massive massive piece because I need it for so many things so that was one of the things I want it for for a future idea is the twas the night before Christmas four of them but I'm going to put them over the um this piece of fabric in one go instead of having them single and on the fabric they've gave us um this Santa I mentioned in um one of my previous videos I'd like to do and he's going to come up on um a rotation um of the future and again I want to do him on this I just think it will be absolutely stunning I think he'll pop on there um so I can't wait to start him, um, he's absolutely gorgeous. He's going to be quite complex. I can just feel it. But um, yeah, I'll give it a whirl. Um, so I got that for that. And then also I mentioned Laura's giveaway had these kind of heads of Oldie World Santas. And I want to put them on this as well. So just kind of anything Christmas themed, I've just bought this for at the moment. I am quite a neutral girl. I do like my neutrals. And I like the bit of opalescent um sparkle in this it just gives it a bit of christmas bling um but it's just i just love it so i just bought a big pile of this um from 123 stitch to do all them patterns with which are going to come up um because i'm i'm excited to obviously start my new rotation once these big ones are finished i've got about 10 i know that i want to do and i think I can only fit in five in the month at the beginning, but some of them are small, like Rosalind Chapel. I think I could do in a few rotations if I put my mind to it. So then I'll be swapping it out for something else relatively quickly. And so I want to make sure that I've got um, the next project kitted up. So that's why I'm kind of going so far ahead and just thinking, right, what do I need if I want to do that one? What do I need? Um, I still need one um, like light effects 
thread for the Santa, the book Santa, um, which I'm waiting for Lakes Lakeside Needlecrafts to get in stock. Um, but other than that, he's DMC, so he's kind of good to go now. I've got his, his fabric. Um, so that's that. I just put it back because if I don't, everything just becomes a riot, as you know. Um, the other thing I got from 123 Stitch, um, just some, some boring bits, but you need it. Um, I've always wanted to try these Aileen's Clear, clear Gel Tacky Glue that uh, Vonna Pfeiffer uses. Uh, I've got some projects coming up that are going to need making into things. So I thought, right, let's just get some of this while I'm doing the order. And I got some Frey Check, um, just because you can never have enough Frey Sop. Um, I know you can fuse it yourself, but I'm just... I'm just rubbish. I just want to go psh, 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 done. I just, like, <laughs> I just can't be bothered getting my little um, sewing machine out to do it. Um, and most of them, like that one, that one comes fused already, so that's fine. But for things like um, projects you're working on for a while over time, sometimes it starts fraying. So I just like putting a little bit of glue in it, let it dry for 10 minutes, we're done. Away we go again. Um, so yeah, so got that. Um the other thing I got, this was from Mama Flossibilities. Again, didn't ask for this, but she just knew I would need it. And she was completely right, because I had been thinking about this issue. So when we move, obviously my first, well, it's my first priority is to have a craft room. But, you know, being realistic, first priority isn't a craft room. It's, you know, bed and bedding and tables and chairs and things like that. So I did realise that I'm going to probably struggle where I'm going to be able to do, like, the finishing of pieces and um, framing and making them into things so my mum got me this beautiful giant brilliant board that I can mark and you know it doesn't matter if it gets cut and things like that um, and also a measuring the measuring ruler in essence um, and I thought I brought it in but I haven't but it also came with a roller cutter and some blades so I've got a brilliant tool now to be able to measure and cut and even if I have to at the, you know when I'm first moving in just sit and do this on the floor or you know a kitchen counter at least I've got something that doesn't matter if I mark and I can just kind of get on with it um yeah so that was so inspired thank you so much my possibilities that's brilliant um what else let me just pause there one second Hi guys, thanks for that. Uh, sorry, just organising myself. <laughs> um, what else I got was, um, I, I, this might be unbelievable, but I only have uh, one Q-snap. I have 11 by 11 and I work on a project for 10 days and then when I'm done, um, I change it over um, and put it on the Q-snap and then take it off and I like giving them a breather and things like that. Um, but I noticed, even though it's not affecting it, there's a kind of hairline crack in the main frame of it. So I thought, right, you really could do with a couple of Q-snaps or, and, you know, you stitch every day if you like. <laughs> you should have more than one. I do have an LBZ wooden frame, but just being at my mum's at the moment, it's a little bit uh, difficult to use. I'll probably set that up in my own home um, when I move out and then I might do my full coverage on there and keep it on there and then just use a Q-snap to move out small ones um, but I just bought um, some Lakeside Needlecrafts another Q-snap I actually think my original ones are like um, you know not the original brand Q-snap um, but I call it a Q-snap but I got an actual Q-snap they had some in um, so yeah uh, I bought another 11 by 11 since we my go-to size and I've got a grime guard that size so I thought I'd just buy another Q-snap so all very sensible bits really you know use, using my pennies wisely Um, I got some vouchers from my nan and my brother from Lakeside Needlecraft so um, anything that was out of stock on 123 Stitch um, kind of um, beads or um crinic wise things like that i just went on lakeside needle crafts and got them them loose ends um so the main thing that me kind of money went into was kitting up two pieces that are in me top 10 to start after um after this rotation um so one of the pieces i'm going to start is um exile around I just think it's very different than what I'm doing at the moment. It's not a scene, it's just kind of shapes and 
lots of beads and crinic and metallics and I just if I'm gonna kind of go from full coverage to something else I thought I'm just gonna do something that's like the opposite um so Glendon Place Exile Around um and I got one of the things I bought was the call for fabric um and it's 28 count chrysalis cashel linen got this off one two three stitch um very unusual color but i like it um i was a bit oh when i first saw it um so the gray day is dulling that down it's a little bit brighter but it's basically a kind of very springy green fabric and the goal is to put this as it calls for on here i think it's not this this is the actual fabric that's just a mount board um so he's going to go on here it's really difficult to hold i need to practice this um yeah absolutely love that so i got that fabric and this guy needs a lot of beads and a lot of buttons um, not buttons beads and crinic so I have completely except for I think two colors which will appear on Lakeside Needlecraft soon I've got a reminder to let me know when they arrive um, but I got all the beads I'm gonna need for this pattern they're absolutely gorgeous um, they're gonna look stunning on this Oh, that's a bit better colour there, you're seeing it. These colours are just so pastel and so Easter and I just cannot wait to start this one. So I'm just showing you all the different beads that come with it. There's so many. goes on guys just goes on love them kind of limey green beautiful and got a bit of a kind of pearly white so a lot of different eggs all obviously have different colors so that's all the beads so there's a good 10 to 15 packs of beads there um, and then I've got the majority now kitted up of all the crinic it needs um, sorry I'm going the opposite wrong way to the camera absolutely gorgeous colours kind of coppery orange there one more yeah so I'm just waiting on I think it's citron and lavender so it will come in you know I'm not in any rush but I'm just I feel like a weight off that this is kitted up so yeah so exile around little sneak peek is going to be one of the things that I uh, oh that's better I didn't do that before it's going to be one of the things that I start um of I think it's five pieces I'm going to start and two are quite small and I think that I'll be able to rotate in some of the others I've got planned quite quickly but this one will take a while obviously but I absolutely love that it's just something a bit different it's very springy I have a lot of Christmas so it'll be nice work and something bright um and I just think all these colors are just gonna look absolutely stunning it's just gonna pop on that fabric um yeah absolutely gorgeous um crinic it's just lovely cannot wait so i've got it all in my bag here these bags are great you probably see these a lot get them off amazon in packs and different colors i've got a waxy fabric so even if you like go on the beach you're not getting sand in your bag um sorry for the noise i've got to put them back if I, I was originally going to put them in my stash cupboard. And I was like, I'll have no clue which one was for which. So I'm not doing that. So yeah, I've just keep it all kitted up in here. 
I like um, project bags, but I'm, I'd, I'd rather stitch, so I don't make my own, and I'd, I'd probably rather spend my money on kitting them up. So, But it's all nice and neat, you know, ready to go. Um, so that was a big kitting up project done with me, my birthday uh, vouchers. And then um, this one, I'm so excited about. This is the one I mainly need this butter, uh, board for that my mum bought. Um, I'm just going to start um, after one of the smalls are finished in this rotation, uh, Sleepy Hollow. I cannot wait to start this. Crafting, um, Kirsty started it um, and I'm just so envious watching her getting going with it and I can't. And I'm like, oh, I need to start. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I need to wait till these are done. But I've always had in mind that I would do this on Haunted. Um, the quite famous Haunted Belfast Linen. I've never owned a piece. I didn't know what it was going to look, whether it's going to work. But I'm happy to say it all looks looks grand it looks like it'll work this very well um so this is um the fabric i received i'm sorry i'm gonna pull you down and take you with me guys right lauren let's just put them there for a minute let's just get some assembly of order here so big job lot of belfast linen stand up it's huge i got it so big because the way this needs to be um put together at the end because i'm going to give this um this finish a go is that i'm either going to need space in between or i'm going to end up having to do it as three singles and then put them together so i didn't i wanted as much room as i could buy <laughs> to do that with to, to give me some you know room for error um and it's such a beautiful piece i'm sure i'll be able to find something else to stitch on it haunted wise if um if i wanted to um for another halloween piece sorry i'm taking the wire with me um it calls for dmc and a few hand dyed Flosses uh, from Weeks Dye Works. Um, so we've got um, carrot. This is going to look stunning. Let's see if I could do it like this. Uh, honeysuckle. Look at them popping on there. Beautiful. Uh, Indian summer. Pewter. Love this one. London Fog. Beautiful. And finally, um, Eggplant. Absolutely gorgeous. I've been so excited to get these um, threads. And I just think they really pop. I'm really happy with the fabric I've chosen, Haunted. I think they'll look lovely on there. Um, it's probably come up a little bit harsher and more mottled on the screen than it does in real life um but i just think if i'm clever where i do it i can very make a very kind of ominous sky as ichabod's running across you know from the van tassel farm to the church um and i think that i think it's going to look really really nice on there so i've got the um weeks dye works now i'm just gonna do dmc to kit it up and then that's it but i've, I've got a master stash of dmc so i'm just gonna add that in there with the time um but he's all ready to go um and that's it guys yeah it was uh, mainly no new patterns except for the pain-free crafts one um but that's what i wanted I, I can't just i can't well for me i can't just keep buying patterns and not kitting them up and um especially when like eggs all around the level of kitting up that it needs so i just kind of put all my vouchers cleverly and my extra bits of birthday money into getting what i needed um to kit them up and I just like I said I feel like a weight's off now and I know that when I finish these if I have an you know unexpected finish um I'm ready to go I can just start and away I go um so that's it really a lot more haul than I would normally um show but it was about time really that I, I, need, I needed to buy some stuff ready um but I hope you've enjoyed um and 
I'm sorry, the weather's so grey and <laughs> the colours are probably all rubbish to see. Um, but yeah, I really um, appreciate you letting me show you them. It's so nice to, to share with like-minded individuals. Um, and yeah, that's it really. Thank you again for watching my video. And I, I love spending time with you guys. Um, it's been a really long month and I really missed talking to you all. Um, there was a lady who said to me... Um, I feel like I know you because you're talking to me and I just want you to know that I feel the same. I'm just talking to an empty room, you know, but I, I imagine you all, I'm talking to you when I speak to you. Um, and when you comment, you know, I just feel like it's friends watching. Um, so thank you so much for everyone who's supporting me and the lovely kind comments. Um, and I will see you all um, 1st of July um, around again um, to review June. Hopefully we've had an actual summer in June because it's supposed to start then so hopefully the rain's off we'll see um even as I speak now it is absolutely chucking it down <laughs> but never mind right thank you very very much and I'll see you next video okay bye bye